Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video of my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing another mail art envelope, but before we get to that, I have to back up a little bit because the idea for this envelope actually came to me while I was in California over the weekend visiting Lawn Fawn. Um, I was left alone with their catalogs and some fun creative things happened. They left me with these catalogs <laughs> and unattended Copics, so... Here we are. It's interesting, this is glossy paper. So it sort of looks like Yupo a little bit with the alcohol ink. So here I am using Yupo paper. I've cut it down to the size I need for an envelope. This is going to be a five by seven envelope or rather the, the card size that's going to go inside the envelope is five by seven. I have a We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board here, and it has a graph printed on the board here. So for a five by seven card, I need paper that is nine and a half by nine and a half inches wide. And I'm going to score the envelope when the edge or corner of the envelope is at four. So I've cut it down to nine and a half by nine and a half, and now I'm using that uh, punch board. So I wanted to mention that this Yupo paper, I bought a big sheet of it from Blick, uh, from Dick Blick, and then I cut it down. And this is the translucent Yupo paper. So um, you're going to be able to see the card that's inside. It's almost a little bit like vellum. It's a really ethereal look and feel. And I've never done an envelope quite like this, but after doing those flowers on those catalog covers, I was completely intrigued by creating my own floral design on an envelope. So here I am with the envelope, and if you need more instruction on that envelope punch board, I've done quite a few videos on that. I'll try to link one up in the top corner. So I'm gonna be using just a small selection of Copic markers, and I'm going to recreate the sunflowers that I put on that catalog. So I'm using this Y17, and just drawing really simple petal shapes. I'm not being really precise. Um, I want this to look very organic and have a lot of uh, personality to each one of these flowers. So, in fact, I noticed when I looked back at the pictures of those catalogs I did earlier, when I did the sunflowers, I actually dragged the yellow petal directly from the brown dot. So there was a little bit of the brown at the very bottom of the petal, and I think that looked really cool too. So now I'm coming in with an orange shade, and I'm just flicking that onto the to the center area of each petal coming out from the middle of the flower. And then coming back with that same yellow marker and spreading out that orange. And just like using liquid alcohol inks that you drip onto Yupo paper, this alcohol ink inside the Copic markers behaves the same. So you can really move and manipulate the alcohol ink by putting more ink on top of it. So you notice that I was able to kind of draw this smaller sunflower and it intersects with the petals on the first flower I drew and kind of overlaps it and looks like it's on top. So I'm just going around and I've sped up the video quite a bit and my plan is to have these flowers travel up and over to the flap of the card or the envelope I mean and it's going to have this kind of cascading effect of all of these flowers. So now I'm gonna take some green and add on some leaves. And I don't want the, the leaves or the flowers to extend past the bottom of the envelope or the left side because I wanna keep everything except that top flap completely clear on the back of the envelope. And I've also got a piece of white paper down behind my envelope here so that I can uh, draw right off the edge. And also, since this is a little bit translucent, it makes it so I don't have to think about those grid lines underneath. Although the grid lines will come into play later when I need to uh, write the address on a straight line. So here are my flowers and my leaves. I'm ready to put the person's, uh, put the recipient's address on. So this is going to Peggy. She submitted her address over at my blog on the mail art address submission form. So if you want to do that, I'll have a link down below. You can just click over and submit your address to be considered for future mail art envelopes. And so she did give me, give me permission to share her address. So thank you so much, Peggy. 
I used a black Copic marker for her name, and then I'm using this marker. I think it's from Pilot. I can't remember exactly the brand of this marker, but I'll have it linked down below in the supplies and in the video description. So I'm writing on her address. And then I decided to fill in that bottom corner after her address was there with a few more flowers or just one flower and some leaves just to kind of make that address look like it's nestled in the middle of all of these flowers. So I'm going to turn the envelope around and I'm going to work on my return address now. And I just used that same marker, just wrote on my address really, really simply, nothing too special. So when it comes to actually assembling this envelope, I was concerned, like this Yubo paper is a little bit slick, like would it adhere okay? Would it hold together? And you know what? It did great. I did a, a, some testing with some different adhesives and the tape that I use, it's actually from uh, Copic. It's their Express It tape, I think is what it's called. And it holds up on this paper extremely well. It was really, really tight. So I'm putting on this tape right here and I'm going to have it not go all the way to that corner because as you'll notice once I fold these flaps in, the very top corner of the bottom flap will not have any of the side flaps underneath it. And I don't wanna like glue my envelope shut. So you don't wanna put the adhesive past those areas. All right, I'm using my bone folder just to crease those edges. Yupa paper doesn't really want to fold all that well, but once you have it adhered closed, it shouldn't be a problem. So I'm putting some postage on here. I've got a vintage stamp, and then I'm going to use a more current non-machinable surcharge stamp. So that should be plenty of postage. And I also wanted to mention that um, I did put a little bit of water on the edge of this to make sure nothing's going to smear or smudge. I think this is really good. As long as no actual alcohol hits any of the, the uh, address or anything, I think it's completely weatherproof. I think it's going to go through the mail just fine. So that's the envelope for today. Just some really fun inspiration using Copic markers or alcohol ink on translucent Yupo paper. On screen, I've got three more mail art videos for you to check out. You can click through and watch those. And thank you so much for watching and for subscribing and for liking the, my videos. If you liked this mail art video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up so I know to do more like this in the future. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.